So, Tori. I would say that I have known Steve since we were like in pre-pre-K. And he has always been the most patriotic person I've ever known. Oh, yeah? Yeah, 100%. Sounds in like the most ironic way, he is also like one of the most patriotic people because he only wants the best for this country. Yeah, it's well, I mean, you know, it's kind of like such an oddball. Through, <laughs> it, it, is, it, is, it is through the lens of irony through which we can be redeemed because if we're willing to look at all the awful shit that goes on in this country, acknowledge how fucking terrible and painful it is for so many people, laugh at it then we can start to heal from it. When we can acknowledge how fucking ridiculous it is, we can say, yeah, that's not right. Okay. Fix Maybe it. we can get on the same page. <laughs> when we don't take it, when we take it seriously and not so seriously at the same time, when we can bring levity into situations, that's, I mean, maybe I'm a little heavy handed, but that's kind of my philosophy is that it's never so bad that we can't laugh about how bad it is. Steve, you've always had a very dark sense of humor. I fucking love this country, and it's shaped me <laughs> indelibly. It's beautiful. And, uh, you know, I still believe that this is a great place where anybody from anywhere can come and try and make something of themselves. And I think that's really cool. Um, I think we're just as corrupt as any other fucking despotic nation. Uh, you know, it. it's a fucking work in progress, and, you know, we're not that far removed from mud huts, so <laughs> we can't give up just because it's hard. Steve, you're just saying that because you've had the fortunate happenstance of being on the very top in the court systems. And I'm talking about the prom court system. <laughs> speaking speaking of a history we're, we're of knowing each right other, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, why don't you introduce our guest, Steve? <laughs> well, uh, this is this is Tori Swear, Victoria. Um, I like Like you said, I mean, we were talking the other night and... I, I thought we knew each other from kindergarten, which is still pretty far back, but then you kind of said, oh, no, we've nope. known each other since, like, pre-K, and I'm like... Montessori. Oh, shit, you're <laughs> fucking right, aren't you? <laughs> and so, yeah, I mean, I, I've known you for a long time, pretty much my entire life. Yep. It hasn't always been, like, tight-knit, even in any meaningful capacity, but um, you're somebody I'm glad to know. I, I think you have a powerful story. I think you're a wonderful, smart person, and that's why I wanted to have you on. Cause Do we get a clap? <laughs> you sure fucking can. <laughs> because who doesn't love that? I feel like I'm on Scooby-Doo. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, if we had a better soundboard, I could have done like rut row right there. Oh, man. I could have been prepared. That would have been awesome. We'll, that's okay. We'll, we'll work on that. That's, that's, that's next. That's okay. Um... Yeah, I don't really know where to start. Well, um, I mean, you guys were just talking about prom, and, yeah. and so, like, you guys knew each other for a while. Like you were saying, not a super deep connection, so we're going to jump to prom. What happened? Why are we got to fuck to jump to prom? Okay. <laughs> what? So, so, that's where we're going. I asked Steve to go to prom with me. Oh, no, you're fu- did oh you? my <laughs> gosh. Did you? Oh I honestly genuinely <laughs> don't remember. <laughs> well, that's I how wouldn't. meaningful it was for Oof. some, I guess. Ooh. <laughs> Steve. Uh, no. Well, let's just say um, Steve's heartless. Yeah. Well, I mean, hashtag Sigma male mindset. I'm trying to remember if you were at, were you at my house before prom or no? Are no. you fucking kidding me? Okay, so <laughs> I don't know where you let's, strolled in let's, from. I'm sorry. Let's, let's kind of let's kind of let's kind of roll this back together. a bit. All right. So it's senior year, and and my friend Taylor goes, "Hey, Steve, I bet I could get you elected to be prom king." And I said. Ha, good fucking luck, asshole. If you do, I'll actually buy a ticket. So he starts fucking orchestrating this fucking campaign. Now, Taylor was a very, you know, political-minded kind of guy in high school. So, you know, organizing a political campaign, a hit job to get me elected to prom court was totally up his alley. So he starts colluding with all of his fucking organizers and schemers. And lo and behold, we have the assembly, and they're announcing the court for prom. And who do I hear but my fucking name? And I go, oh, my fucking fucking god you're fucking <laughs> kidding me and so i have to walk up on stage and everybody's fucking eating shit and i'm like you know this fucking sociopath of a fucking mental hit list of people that i don't like and it's like jesus fucking christ what has happened 
<laughs> so anyways, <laughs> they can't just give me a ticket, of course, because I'm on the court. I still have to fucking pay $50 to buy it. Well, <laughs> so naturally, I walk up to the money. stage after, you know, school and, you know, they're like, oh, you, you got on the court. Uh, it's $50 for a ticket, Steven Jackson. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? He's not even a senior, number one. Number two. <laughs> And I'm, not gonna, and I'm not going to get into <laughs> to Stephen Jackson, God rest his soul. He's not dead. That's fine. I'm, I can still say <laughs> I that. I'm very concerned. I, to say, um, I don't think he's dead, but I'd feel terrible <laughs> if I was left. <laughs> um, so needless to say, this is all not going fucking great. But um, anyways, I buy the fucking ticket. I'm fucking pissed about it, but. You know, I fucking, I made a commitment. I told him I'd go if he fucking did it, and he fucking did it. So, can't back down. Um, it's the night of prom. I've got a fucking searing migraine. <laughs> I'm going stag with Chetwin and Gardner, two of my good friends who once absolutely fucking hated my guts. <laughs> and I think I spent most of the night in a corner of the banquet hall with like three chairs put together, my suit coat over my face, you know, like absolute fucking dog shit, because I had a migraine. Um, at one point, they put Rick Astley's Never Gonna Give You Up on. I did get up and sing for that. There's a good picture of that somewhere on Facebook. Somewhere out there. Um, then I immediately went back and laid down and covered my fucking head, because I was in pain. And then they're doing the announcements for who won court, and I didn't get king. I got first attendant, which was fine because I got to dance with Summer Sawaya. Summer Sawaya, wonderful athlete, beautiful person, beautiful soul. Mm-hmm. Um, also not dead. Also so. not dead yet. <laughs> yep. Shout out to Summer Sawaya. Um, we danced to Eric Clapton's Wonderful Tonight. I sang every word into her ear because I was so fucking nervous because she was so fucking hot. I was like, I'm going to fucking, 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 fucking blow my load in my pants right now if I don't have something to distract me. So, you know, I can't dance. So I'm, I'm, a fucking, as as I'm a fucking virgin. I don't fucking know anything. Um, and then but I hope she's listening. <laughs> you know, I hope she is too. Um, Down in Florida. Now she understands. Now she. Now maybe she'll understand. Now maybe that moment will be contextualized and it'll make sense. <laughs> and so you know, it was like, oh, she'll okay, so you know, we got we got done with the fucking post dance clarity. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we got done with the we got done with the fucking forced dance that was really awkward for me because I'd never touched a woman before, like in any meaningful capacity, and. Just I, the whole time. I went, basically, <laughs> uh, I went and I found Chetwin and Gardner, and we said, all right, where's the after party? And then nobody got a hold of us. <laughs> I dropped them off at home. I got zero <laughs> pussy, and I went home and went to bed. So, you know, that was my prom experience. So, you know, a couple, things, a couple things I've learned in life. Number one, going to prom, getting on court does not mean you get anything. Nobody owes you anything. Number two, playing an instrument, even if you play it mediocre or well, will not get you any kind of sexual gratification. Um, if you're a fucking loser, you're a fucking loser. So, <laughs> takes one to know one. Oh, oh good boy, we've <laughs> now, now you some deep ex- lessons we've with Steve. We've got some deep layers. Well, you know. And now you have to explain about apparently you were trying to go to prom with him or whatever. Yeah, there's a yeah, whole other, have, there's a whole other have, side to this. Quite frankly, I I mean, you know, my memory's always full of fucking holes, but I had no idea that you'd ever ask me. And if you did, I did. If you did, I figured you were gaslighting me because everything was a plot. <laughs> Especially, especially if a hot girl comes up and talks to me, it's like, no, this is a fucking scheme to deceive me and make me look like a fool. There's no way they'd be interested. Steve just looking for psyops from every age. I'm paranoid. What can I say? Paranoid? Maybe schizophrenic. Well, I had my first boyfriend at the time, so I was like, I went with him, obviously. But yeah, I could tell a story about that. Yeah, I remember. Um, oh, the after, How are the, the after party. Oh, no, I'm sorry. This is a different person, different story, but I'll still tell that for oh, a little bit. For, okay. for a clarification, what year is this, too? 2011. Yeah. 2011? Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the year that Kesha was queen. <laughs> Before yeah. she got, you know, like, labeled with, like, a shackle of a record dealer, whatever happened to her. Yeah. Well, yeah. this probably was right around that time. Yeah, I think so. That she was experiencing all that. Yeah. The music was great. The Kesha, colors Kesha were... kind of slaps. Oh, yeah, she does. I love her. I really do. Like, it was a great time for, you know, 
fun. Great time for being alive and being a fucking young, dumb teen. An American, all American teen. That's right. You know? Um, but or all these Billy Eilishes start coming around, <laughs> fucking ruining it. <laughs> all their green hair, and their fun. black clothes, just haunting the halls. Yeah, no, I I loved my prom experience. I can't say anything, but you know, I'm that conceited girl that was also prom queen. So I had a really good time. I didn't get to sing "Wonderful Tonight" in your ear. Really I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm sorry, Steve. Woman. You missed out. So, so for you the missed out. I'm, I, I was going to say out. I really did miss out, <laughs> but I do remember eating a lot, and I just was very happy that night. And we went to an after party, and you could have texted. Me, Steve, but you, you think know, I had anybody's phone number in high school? I was gonna say that's a problem too. Like, why would you want to go out if you had a migraine? Like, I feel like some of this was just because I, I wanted to get fucking laid because <laughs> it was fucking prom and I'm like, I could get pussy tonight, guys. Yeah, but you it hit in the happen. corner with your jacket covering you. Well, because I'm because that's how my brain works. You oh, see how Steve. you see? Oh, Steve. If I sit in the corner and I just fucking brood, maybe somebody brood. will talk to me. Yeah, I mean, he's he's like, hey. Batman got pussy, right? Like, <laughs> no, probably not. <laughs> probably not. Yeah. I thought Batman and Robin were always like a gay thing. It was kind of like quoted there. Okay, I was gonna say, like, especially like the you know the, he's the some early kind of child ones, predator, the Adam yeah. West days. He's like, kind of child. Batman, kind of a child <laughs> predator though. Well, Adam West is deceased, so mm-hmm. fucking rest in peace. Bro, see you later. Bomb, see you later. That bomb skit goes down in history though. Like, oh like yeah, five minute above his head where he's just running through town. It's just stupid music. Oh my god, the shit oh. they did for TV back then. Well, or the, I mean, the, the shark repellent spray. <laughs> like <laughs> my, my my trusty bat shark repellent. Like oh, and the helicopter, the Adam West helicopter that was like a glass <laughs> sphere with like. <laughs> Yes. Blades above it. It was like well, nothing. It, yeah. they, they had to sit there and be like, "Well, what's gonna be super high tech?" Yeah, <laughs> and it's all it's like, like Jetsons <laughs> shit. Yeah, <laughs> we're from the far off year of two thousand and two. Look at the calendar. It's like okay, they're fucking. Yeah. Up. They're just addicted to fucking crack cocaine. Yeah, they're hallucinating. I love the whole all those. Thing. I love all those eighty shows and movies where they're like. The year is 2005. He's like, yeah, <laughs> fucking like, good, good luck. And they're on hoverboards, and it's like, oh, man, we just, we still don't even fucking have health care, bro. <laughs> 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 True. So you're telling me about, uh, a little bit before we started rolling, um, the high school, you were doing a, a, a tour for the Alumni Association or some shit. Mm-hmm. Tell me a little bit about that. And we, for clarification, this is, like, recent. No, this is, like, 2000 and. Five. Uh, it's what? fucking recent, Brian. I, I, okay, I'm, cl- I'm clarifying for the people who weren't here <laughs> when I was here. You fooled me. See, when you get serious, I have such a hard time knowing if I, you're serious. I, or joking. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to deliberate on that. I'm going to let you speak because you're the guest here. And- <laughs> yes. So I, myself, and then several of our other classmates, Caitlin Anastasia, and then um, Abby McWilliams, are, she's a year younger than us, but we're all also on that. And we started a couple years ago, um, like we started, I think, around like 2019, because um, we managed to get like one really good reunion in there, and then we had to shut things down for COVID, obviously, and we've just started getting back into doing reunions again at like a larger scale. This year, we had it at Good Times, um, the point in the back, mm-hmm. but then they also opened up like the, we had the whole room in the back. Yeah, it's a nice place to do something Yeah, like it's that. like a giant so room. It's a nice auditorium. Mm -hmm, It is. And then they had the point and that was like where they were doing um, like beer and wine. And then you could go to the other bar and there you could do like liquor drinks. But they opened up the whole outside for us. People had access to everything outside. The weather is beautiful. It was really nice. Um, And then one of the other things we do that weekend, we do a golf tournament, which I know nothing about golf. I personally care next to nothing about golf. Kissing the eggs. (laughs) The The ball. The good walk spoiled. Yeah. What the hell does that mean? That's what golf is. That's literally good, what it's called. The King's Game. The good walk spoiled, did yeah, you just say? Yeah, because you could just go on a nice walk or you could play golf. Oh, and, yeah. And ruin it's the, it's spoiled a spoiled walk. walk. Okay, I got you. You, you are literally and, like an 18th I'm not, this century is, ghost. This is you not, know that? I am not making <laughs> so anything up. These are, these are literally <laughs> what the great fucking scholars of the past have called golf. Who 
the hell are the great scholars of the past that talk about I don't golf? know, fucking Tiger Woods and his fucking Oh, I thought you were talking about like Socrates. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Socrates played golf if he was Scottish. <laughs> the Romans. Socrates. The, the Greeks did not Greeks, play golf. Yeah. <laughs> Athens famous for their, we yeah. for their We don't know. Course. They're fucking yeah, for the They're buried under course. fucking volcanic ash. What are you say? We There's don't know what happened to them. They were all Steve, fucking homos. I, I, feel, I feel like you are uh, was a little loaded. throwing a lot of history together in one space. <laughs> well, you know what? It all fucking boils together anyways because I'm an American and none of it matters. Mm-hmm. It, it all happened just go, somewhere else. It all comes back, into, back to America. Tiny back into patriotism. I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. American education has failed. Okay, okay so you're you're yeah. running this event. You're running this event. So there's a golf event that goes on on usually on the day that the event takes place or something, and you play golf and it's like a tournament, and then you win something at the end. Um, this year they raffled off like one of my drawings uh, that I did of I did a whole series of the different elementary schools when they were first yeah. done, um, mm-hmm. and so we raffled off one of those for the golf tournament, and then we raffled off a couple of those also for the event. And then um, one of the other things that we do is we do a high school tour, which is something that I enjoy because I am that loser that loves going through Oland's history and learning about, like, Go school history. Go Huskies. It takes all the Huskies to pull the sled. <laughs> Barb Lyas taught you that. fucking <laughs> does. <laughs> Barb With her glass eye, that. she'd pop it out and suck on it. And say, it takes all the Huskies, click, 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 to pull the sled. She'd spit it out. And <laughs> I hope Spitting. she's listening. Uh, and she's know. also not dead. She's still alive. <laughs> well, you know what, Barb, if you're listening. Um, I, Barb, if you're listening, I did have swine flu. <laughs> I know you had an assembly where you said nobody had it. I did have it. Oh, Please tell me no. you were in the assembly room. No, because I had swine flu. Oh, okay, I thought you went to school with it. Okay. No, I stayed home. It was the week. Well, oh, yeah. they just kind of just Stephen Jackson figure he was sick that week. Yeah. yeah. Um, but taking a long shit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Lord. But I really love doing that. So, like, I mean, even though the high school is exponentially different than even when we graduated, like, they've chopped a lot of it up. They took out the locker bays in the first couple floors. They lowered all the ceilings to make room for an HVAC system. Like, upgrades, but at the same time, took away a lot of the character of the school. So it's very weird because I'm taking people around the school that haven't been there in, like, 30 years and so for as much as it's changed us in the last 10 it's really changed like since they knew it so there's almost nothing that's the same except for a few little things here and there and then somebody usually always on the tour wants to know where like that shooting took place so I'm always kind of like this is the room this is the location so we get a lot of people that graduate at that same time Uh, uh, one thing I got to add to that yeah my dad before he graduated high school, helped start the gun team, the gun club mm-hmm. in Olean that that young man who did the shooting was a part of. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Weird. Every weird, school had. Weird layers to Every school to had that. a National Rifle Association. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they like did. Yeah. Rod and you know, gun when, my, when, when you know, my dad was in high school, I think he, you know, he was telling me the story once, and I'm going to recall it like shit but it was like you know he had a friend who wanted to start the club and he needed a couple like people to help him start it so my dad was like sure i'll help you get that going and mm-hmm. you know, i didn't think anything of it it was just a normal thing yeah. at the time well it's it's and still, then they still graduate, a normal thing they graduated yeah. and you know i think it was maybe the year or two after they graduated and that happened and mm-hmm. you know one of the first shootings at school shootings in america yep yeah, yeah. First, only in new one york of the first look major it up one now it's more American. America. That's, yeah. that's local pride. <laughs> yeah. July 4th, let's Speak, go, baby. Speaking of America, I mean, it, <sighs> isn't, and it, aren't the stats showing that it's like something like, no, no, that's Amazon Prime. That's more American than Apple Pie. I was going to say school shootings. But <laughs> well, they're getting there. But they're getting there. They're catching up. A couple years on something. ABC, America's Next School Shooter. Is that well, a real show? It should be. Oh, or it will be soon, you know. I mean, it'll be so normalized that it'll be like a, you like know. Like it's a game it'll show. Be like, it'll be like, you know, hunting sport. I mean. Well, they've already got all the commercials and stuff out there now yeah. that are super traumatizing, like, adver- you know, advertising for the safety of kids. Yeah, but that's wait, right. wait, wait, what, like what? We should there's arm like, all children. There's, there's like these commercials that I've seen that have come out that are from the perspective of kids and it starts off as just like they're in school, it's a normal day, and then all of a sudden there's a shooter and um, it takes them mm. and it shows you like what they're texting 
and yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. like you. That's terrifying. You, it it is. It's awful. Like you see these kids hiding in the bathroom, and then somebody comes in, and then a classmate drops dead, and you're seeing like them texting their parents, and then they just they look at the camera, and they're they're like something to the effects of you know like keeping how us emotionally safe. And I'm like, how emotionally manipulative. It and, is. That's awful. And it is, but it's well, so. It's, it, well, and who, how, who sponsored it's so pointed, it? Though I don't remember because I because I, 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 I feel like if the NRA sponsored it, it have oh, a very a very different message, me? like a di- very different meaning. If they if they were sponsoring that commercial, no, 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 the kid no. would look you in the eyes and like, then a hole would get pull out a gun in the back yeah. of their yeah. fucking head, and you'd see the shooter standing all cool and Rambo like with fucking fireworks in the background and eagle going. They'd say fucking the NRA shoot up a fucking school. Why don't you? Yep, that is definitely... We need to arm all children. We need to arm all mentally ill military vets so that on the 4th of July we can gather them all in one place, let the fireworks go off, and let them go. And see what happens. <laughs> and let them the, go? The, the, I mean, you know, like, like, the, 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 like the, the, men, the mental illness <laughs> hunger games you have going on over here? Well, I mean, if they go into a PTSD flashback, they might just start shooting. We give them enough ammo, who knows how many casualties we'll have. Why the that hell would make would we headlines. arm these people? That would make headlines. This is why you can't give him rule of the world because you can't give Steve yeah. Power just period. <laughs> well, no, I well, mean, think you about, know, think like, about oh, think mean, about how quickly though people would jump into action to do something about mental health, right? All these people who are like, "Oh, shoot, shooting, we should do something about mental health," and then do nothing, and then well, Steve's and then over we'll, here like, we'll "Yeah, give him guns. he's like, I took every VA patient and put him in a stadium and, and gave him a gun and, and gave him a gun, and then just launched." Fucking Roman candles around them all day. Yeah, well, I mean, some of them know, at them. That's just, what it feels like. That's what it feels like. Reality is sometimes, and maybe my maybe my perspective becomes a little exaggerated when I'm you know on one. But well, I mean, you know, it's kind of like that to yeah. me. That just becomes it, the logical progression it, of it. It's kind of like okay, we're yeah. doing all this fucking awful shit. We're not actually doing anything meaningful to change it. So okay, what's next? Well, this is what's it, next. It, it, it really does make let's me so. Turn it, so we'll, uh, let's turn it into a spectacle. It, it always, let's make it a fucking joke it because that's what it is right like now. That. It always takes something worse than the last thing to get them to even. Let's move. Push it to the Amen. logical extreme. That's all I'm trying to do. Yeah. And to me, that's the logical extreme. It's, it becomes a fucking let's circus. Let's cut out that middleman. Let's stop fucking pussy and footing around like it's a big deal, and let's just normalize it then. Let's just normalize killing people like it's nothing. <laughs> like the logical extreme. Well, that's because that's what their logical extreme seems to be to me. That, I, you know, it's like that's the only thing I can think of when I see all these fucking tragedies happen is it must be what the people want. I know it is concerning. We just wanted to be the Wild West. We just want anybody and anywhere to be able to do whatever untold thing they want. Deputized citizens. Could you imagine Steve as a cowboy? Can you imagine yeah. me as a politician? I'd be great. Um, so there was, well, a, there was an interesting thing I wanted to say hmm. to kind of get back on track. Thank you. Stop rambling. I was waiting for it. <laughs> um, <laughs> you were talking about when you're giving the tour of the school. Yeah. How you like you haven't been in there. It's changed the character. Yes. And then... You know, I was kind of following you as you were posting some of those, you know, drawings that you did of the old schools. So, you know, talk talk a little bit about that and kind of what inspired you to do that and kind of how you yeah. look at that. Because I think that I want to hear that. Yeah. So I of I've just always really loved Olean history and um, Olean used to have eleven public schools, like eleven you know public elementary schools, and then they had several private or religious schools and then um there was like just the high school that would have taken on a huge amount of kids so we've lost um well obviously over half of them most of them been torn down um there's a couple that are left and just like repurposed like school eight is the one that's over on homer street so that's what the state police barracks are in now school 10 is ijn and that one's obviously epic church um epic epic yep and i was i was really glad that they were able to salvage that one but luckily ijn did make it onto the national historic registration several years ago so they couldn't even think about turning it like tearing it down or letting it go abandoned something has to occupy that um and it does smell exactly the same as it did (laughs) it wasn't there a few years ago and as soon as you walk through those doors punches you and it's just like elementary asbestos Uh, (laughs) it might be there's definitely something it's like Old cafeteria food, yeah, and, yeah. like, laminated wood. Um, but 
that I just always had a special place in my heart for IJ, and that's where I met some of my absolute best friends. It's an amazing building. It's just got some gorgeous reliefs Can you, carved uh, into the sides of it. Define IJN for people. Yeah, so IJN um, slash cool Epic Church yeah. is, uh, let's see, that would be West Henley Street, where it intersects with 4th. Um, so if you took that street down, it you can't miss it. I mean, it's just a gorgeous... You can if you're not paying attention, but you got to be really, like, <laughs> you gotta be absorbed really in something. Stupid, and I, <laughs> in the, the acronym, what does it spell it? Um, so it stands for Ivers J. Norton. He okay. was uh, also a mayor of Olean years ago, and then um, I believe he turned... I can't remember if he was principal of the school when it first opened or not, but anyways, they, um, after, you know, when the first, when they first came about these schools, they just went by numbers, Mm -hmm. one through 11, and then at some point in dedication, I think maybe they named it Ivers J. Norton. Uh, Same thing with, like, North Hill. It was school seven at one point, but then it became North Hill, and that one's now just, like, a Christian school. So I started off with the 11 public schools, um, and I did those all in a series, and then I just worked on which i haven't like uploaded it or gotten prints made of it but then i just did the original high school which that was built in like the 1800s and then that came down um i believe sometime around the 1920s late 30s because the current um structure that's there right now has been there since the 30s that's why it's like our high school that we have now is very art deco because that was like really what was in at the time so Mm -hmm. if you go in they haven't touched the front main lobby Fucking with the auditorium a little bit, but for the most part, it's all still the same. Like the reliefs, the carvings, the colors, the lights, all that um, stained glass artwork. It's it's an absolutely beautiful school. And the worst part is now you literally can't get into it because it's solidified like a fortress because That's of right. guns. <laughs> so you can't really get in to see much of it anymore. But um, I worked on the first school. Then I'll be working in between on the private schools because I know a lot of people want uh, St. Mary's done. And then we just have a lot of kids our age that went to Washington West and Eastview. And I ain't going to lie, I think they're some of the fuggliest buildings <laughs> that we've got around. But I've heard that friends of ours want me to do those ones, too, so that they can have a little I mean, memorabilia. you're kind of doing them all. So. I know. I, I might as well throw that are, in. Are you yeah. using, like, uh, the, the reference material from when they were first created? Or are you using their currently standing? No. So what I do is um, there's a... There's a couple different Facebook groups that I follow that are just awesome. Only and Memories, mm-hmm. um, like Only and Remember Back When or something, something like that. That one is awesome. There's so many people that post really old photos. And one time, I think John Ferkel, it was, posted all the schools, like old pictures of them. So I take those, and then if the buildings are still there, I'll just go and take, like, snapshots, like, closer up so I can get as much detail as possible. But most of the schools that I drew are gone. Hmm. Most of them, like, 11 is Tops parking lot. 10 is still there, luckily. Um, 9, gone. 8, still there. 7, still there. 6, gone. 5, Boardmanville. 4, gone. 3, gone. 2, gone. And 1 is gone, too. Where, where would people go if they wanted to learn more about this? Um, <clears throat> if they wanted to learn more about only on history itself? Uh, yes, and then the schools. So a lot of where I've gotten my information from was I was fortunate enough when I was in high school to do an internship. We had to do a high school internship with somebody, Mm -hmm. and I chose to do um, the only on Historical Society, which is the Bartlett House. Mm -hmm. Uh, The same guy was working there as he still is now. He's super nice, and he just let me, like, go through the whole house and go through the whole carriage house which is the museum and that's where they keep Mm -hmm. all the records and just like read and look and just being the nerd that i am i just like went crazy and i looked up all this stuff and i just was reading all this stuff and at the time we were putting our high school yearbook together and a couple friends of mine wanted me to put something together because this was when the renovations were really starting so they wanted pictures of what the building looked like back then to kind of like memorialize it So then I was looking up pictures of high school and I was learning a lot more about it at that point in time. And I mean, there's just so many cool things about the high school that you would never know about. Like the cafeteria used to be on the third floor. It's where all the language department is now. There's also a really cool home ec room up there that's a couple people's offices, but it's like, it's got a fireplace in it. It's got a whole kitchenette in it. And it's like where the women used to go and they'd learn how to 
take care of babies and sew and cook and clean for the husband while the men all were downstairs taking shop or drafting or some sort of manly thing back then. Yeah, that's really cool. So uh, where did your inspiration and your love for history, specifically local history, wh- where did that come from? Uh, well, I've always had it. Luckily, I have two parents that are very into um, historic preservation, restoration, salvation, all that kind of stuff. We live in an 1870s, <clears throat> excuse me, East Lake Victorian home. Um, and it's been a 30 plus year journey as I've watched my mom and my dad try to like restore this home to as much of its natural state as possible while at the same time being super weird and eclectic like the three of us. Uh, but my mom inherited the house actually from her great grandmother who bought it from the original owners in the 18 or like the late 1800s. She bought it when she came over here from Lebanon and she turned it into rental property. She turned that one and a couple other homes and at a family reunion a couple of years ago, and I did our original homestead in Olean, which is right next to the tracks. It's uh, 321, I think, 1st Street. And I drew that for everybody in the family because I was like, this is when our ancestors came over from Lebanon. Like, this is where they set up. So it's a piece of all of our history. And then I started getting more and more into drawing different places around Olean, and I decided the schools would be a good place to start because for a lot of people, they're very nostalgic, and they're just... They're super easy. They're nice, small, you know, size, so you can just buy them, pop them up on your wall type of thing. And then more and more people kept asking, well, if you're doing those ones, are you going to do this one? Are you going to do that one? I'm like, all right, we'll just do a whole school series. Plan to have every of them, every single one of them done by the summer um, because in the fall I'd like to start working on, um, like, downtown businesses, more getting into all that kind of stuff. And simultaneously I'm also working on a Buffalo series because that's technically where I live now. So I'm also working on starting a series and intermittently doing them in between. That's really cool. It's, uh, now, as is, is a fan of history, is, is there a specific point in history, or is there just that local history that really calls to you? I really enjoy doing the local stuff more than anything because, and even like with Buffalo, there's a lot of things that have been done already, and I don't really feel like Olean. Olean's had a few artists, um, I think, her name I'm trying to think of what her name is exactly but um there's been like several people around Olean that have done buildings and they've done their own version of it watercolor artists acrylic artists um different things here but I haven't personally seen anybody do quite my style which is just heavy-handed black and white Mm -hmm. sometimes I will color and colored pencils or and acrylics but that's usually like a custom thing because it takes so much more time um and I just I really like the black and white contrast and just the sketchiness of it so like I said, I'm trying to work on portions at a time, the schools and, like, the downtown, businesses, that kind of thing. And then I would like to get to the point where I put them all in a book, and then people could just buy the book if they wanted to have them all. Yeah. I'm always thinking. That's really cool. <laughs> I, that's super cool. I, I, I definitely invest. I, I, I think local history is a lot of fun. Um, Steve. What? What? This is this is the point where you ask a, one of your crazy well, questions. Wait, oh, wait. No. before before that, did we ask? <laughs> sorry if I missed that one thing. Attention uh, could have happened. How did you start doing this, it, especially around here? As like, oh, because I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, I bet every every artist in the region is starving. So I mean, true that. You know, mm-hmm. true that. <laughs> how and I exemplify how, that. Too. How and and why? <laughs> yep. Well, <clears throat> Steve would be able to. Back me up on this. I mean, I've literally been drawing my entire life. Yeah. Like, freak. <laughs> <laughs> Steve has another good friend of ours, and, like, he and I always grew up just drawing. We just drew all the time. And <laughs> I always loved watching, like, Joey's style. It was so heavy-handed and so angry drawing. <laughs> but, like, mine, I just kind of honed and worked on mine over the years, and I found that art was really, like, the thing that I loved to do, and... Um, my grandfather, uh, was out of, he lived in Buffalo originally, he was from there, but he moved to Cuba and he was a watercolor artist there and a high school teacher for years. So he taught a lot of people like Tom O'Grady is an uh, an artist around here that people like, especially in the Allegheny area would know. He taught him, he taught Mrs. Hines, our art teacher, um, in high school. Like he, 
was very influential for a lot of people. And the one thing that he loved to do more than anything was he'd go out and he'd take pictures of barns and, like, barnscapes and landscapes, and then he'd go home and he was watercolor and he'd paint them. I love the look of watercolors, but watercolors are a bitch to work <laughs> with. So I never really got into that. But I do attribute, like, a lot of my love for architecture from him. But then I also went for architecture in college. And I learned a lot more about, like, the technical side and perspective and all that and just a bit more on how to hone it and do a better job at getting the technical points of it. And then from there, over the years, I just, like, adopted my own style where it's I don't get out the T-square anymore. I'm not using a ruler to line everything up, but I can see the dimensions in my head, so it's it's much faster. Mm -hmm. Like, these drawings used to take me months sometimes, and now I can do one in a week Very and just cool. keep it moving. Where, so. where did you go to school for architecture? I went to Alfred State. Oh, hell yeah. I started <laughs> in architecture, and then there was way too much math, and then I got to the point where there was math <laughs> and physics, and I was like, oh, Lord. This is going to cause me to I'm fail an artist, out. I'm not an artist. So I'm going <laughs> yeah. to have to switch. So I switched to interior design. And it was like all, all of my architecture shit transferred so easily. And then I just had to deal with some some really screwed up professors. But other than that, like, it was exponentially well, come on, easier. You're, you're a woman. You can't be an interior designer. <laughs> Steve. Or, or you can't <laughs> go. so sexist, Steve. <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> you're a woman. You can't be an interior That's all they are. Pretty much. I, I, Steve, you I can't be an interior designer. I could if I wanted to. You could if you wanted to. You want to go back to school for that? You Chop go some bits off? We'll fucking go. <laughs> you got to be willing to do it. It's no, not that hard. No, you don't. There's so well, many there men. There you out. go. See? What well, a progressive society and, we live in. And, and I had some male friends who were in the exact same boat where they were in architecture, and they're like, this is just too much math, yeah. engineering. And then they went so into interior design, and I think that's a lot it's of fun. It's truly what year, masculine What year did you graduate still. from that? 2014. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, there's just way too much because you get into that class called structures and it's just math and physics. And like, mm. I failed <laughs> physics, so then Everything. they gave me that and I'm like, yeah, me too. Everything artists love. <sighs> it was math. awful. It was, and I had the most boring teacher for it too. So it, it wasn't like a fun physics class by any means. So if you didn't already understand the basics of how the world works, you would have gone through that class very well. But for somebody like myself that, Dreamer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I totally get it because, you know, I don't have fucking math. Fuck, fuck. I can't Steve, math. I always thought you were good at math. I no, fucking really? suck at math. Really? I was like, I was in the advanced class because I had good test scores, but I was constantly <laughs> like bottom of the barrel because placement in advanced courses was not like how good you did in a course. It was based on your state test results. So I scored well enough to get into the advanced class and I didn't drop back because all my friends were in it. But... Man, I could not keep up. My math skills were woefully inadequate. Steve, I was constantly I couldn't keep a D up student in the remedial classes. So. I probably wouldn't have been able to. I probably would have been like a C or a B student in normal remedial math courses. But the advanced stuff, I could not. I'm jealous of that. Keep up. So, so I, I, I really wanted I'm to. Sorry to hear that. I should have been an architect, I guess. Because <laughs> I could have done it, apparently. Damn it, Man, Steve, I, you I missed was, your calling. I, it's never I, too late, buddy. I would definitely want to live in a house of your design. Oh, yeah. I feel like. I feel, Steve I feel like if I, if I didn't have a, a mental ailment going into it, I would by the time I left. Yeah, well, you know. Like the house Hostile is, architecture. The, the, the that's house, my, is, that's my the house is designed to make you <laughs> start get being paramo paranoid. Like yeah. it's designed with sharp corners to, so like you never All like sharp angle. All the kind of off kilter. Like, like slightly, nothing slightly off. Nothing looks quite right. It's like yeah. one of those magic eye images yeah. where you look at it and it's like nothing. You can't really identify it's, anything, but it all looks identifiable. It, it, yeah, it's like all designed to create paranoia yeah. <laughs> that would be good uh, he just wanted to make a, a it's like physical an escape environment room, but you can't escape yeah it simplifies <laughs> what's in his brain like yeah yeah that's fucking like, this is art <laughs> it's beyond it's not art it's fucking chaos well is it <laughs> most art chaos though? they're synonymous we can, i mean think I about know. jackson pollock like um, come on kenny g is pretty chaotic <laughs> yeah kenny g is wild <laughs> oh, man man so Boy, no, we had a Kenny G play, a song playing at the reunion, and I just... Did you really? 
I mean, Kenny G can fucking play. Oh, like, he's fantastic. Just a slouch. It's just he chooses to play easy shit because it's, you know. Well, it, it is easy, easy listening. Yeah, to don't they? So, so, whole so no, not all art is chaos. Some some art that's is easy true. listening, and that's fine. <laughs> don't, is it, isn't there like a thing over some in, is, is it China, listening. where they play one of his songs near the end of the day to let people know that it's like curfew time? They play. The they play "Going Home" by they Kenny G. I, I can believe it. I'm pretty, you can you can look that up. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm, we'll, we'll, we'll I'm some pretty fact sure that's a saying. Soft fact checking. That would be such a like a smooth, soothing way to. That end That would my be day. fucking terrifying at the end of every day. What the, hell? the bell to go <laughs> home is you, Kenny you, G. You have to the Why end of this song. Why otherwise, is that terrifying. It's the most yeah, easy yeah. listening it is. song yeah, you have it, out there. It, it, based on one yeah, article that I've read. So that's what's so, or that's looked what's at. so it, it, it's more unsettling, perturbing. It's kind of like, you know, the end of the day and Kenny G comes on and, you know, Pavlovianly, you, you respond <laughs> by starting to drool and you pack <laughs> your lunch pail yeah. out of your locker and you punch your card and you start walking out the factory doors mindless, gormless. Gormless? Con- conditioned. <laughs> what the hell does that mean? All right, Steve. Is that a word? It's a real word. What is? What? Steve, I need you. I, I okay. I'll look up gormless. Now I need you to. Th- <laughs> I, I need you to throw her one of your wild questions. Um, I'll look at shit, gormless. You, can't, you put me on the spot with a wild question. Um, hmm. You know, so, so a, while you think about it, I'll define gormless. Please do. <laughs> which is an adjective, which means lacking intelligence or vitality, stupid or dull. Where the totally, hell did you get totally, that wow. from? It was apt, but where did you get it from? I've read a book once in a while. <laughs> I, I, I pick up a book. I used to I read. read a book called Gormless. I, yeah, I used to read. I used to have a good vocabulary. He's, he's, he's good at math. Still have like an it's there. Vocabulary. That makes sense. Yeah, You've got good a good vocabulary. That's right. right. You like English. That's why I have a good map. <laughs> Gorm, <laughs> gormless and maidenless. <laughs> yeah, gormless and maidenless. That's Steve. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a band right there. That's a whole nother. Gormless and maidenless. <laughs> Okay, um, okay, you know, maybe this isn't a wild question, but um, let's get political. Tell me about the Olean Racial Justice Coalition that you were a part of <sighs> and your experience with that. Good gravy. That was a wild ride. That was a wild couple of years. So, yes, I try to stay as politically active in Olean as I possibly can because I find that it's like a constant battle between... I mean, in my opinion, sometimes it's just good versus bad, but, like, I feel like it's just active versus inactive. I mean, I'm constantly up the mayor's ass, and I know that he does not like me, but he's infuriating, and it's really sad to see, like, I I just saw somebody in our, in the LGBTQ community and only, and, like, post a picture, and it had, it had, like, a sign, and it said, OPD hate the F word and somebody photoshopped his face onto the picture and like these people are like agreeing with it and stuff and I just it just made me sad because I'm like clearly this just shows that there is no sort of you know there's no faith whatsoever that this community has in either the police that are supposed to be keeping them safe or the mayor who's making the rules to help keep them safe but that's kind of how it's been for the last you know however many years we've all been Uh, my entire life yeah, and and and, to, and I mean, to, as far as I'm aware, to to throw it out there, when when I first met you, and I met you aud- audibly through Sarah. Oh yeah, because uh, oh, that I, a lot. I, I I was with Sarah, and she was playing a recording of the people who spoke mm-hmm. at one of the councils, and I was like, this person has spoken so well. She was so eloquent and succinct in her points. This like she better be leading this if she isn't already. And Sarah's like, oh yeah, she is. I'm gonna call her right now. And I'm like, Sarah, that is not what that is not what I was intending. But that's when I what, that's when I first met yep. you was ironically that's Sarah pretty much like, when she first met me too. Like, and I just remember answering the phone and being like, what the hell? Yeah, that's Sarah. What's going on? I, like, I love her. I love her. But that's most calls from Sarah. Yeah, and that's like when she was still. That's when we really didn't know each other. So she was not super comfortable around me she was still mm. like in her i'm gonna build you up phase because now that we're friends it's just like i'm gonna break you down phase. <laughs> like, she's just always punched down <laughs> always <laughs> like michelle obama said when they go low we go lower <laughs> so i don't know she's uh she cracks me up though but mm. yeah i do remember i i don't really remember if i was leading that event really and truly but um i know it's 
I don't know what happened to that eloquent girl. She got replaced with a river rat, honestly. But <laughs> 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 Ding. Yeah. Just I need some news. That was um that was several years ago back when like the George Floyd incident first happened and we were all really concerned with what was going on within the Olean Police Department linked with our mayor who as most people know is a former officer himself so naturally he always sides with OPD because that's he just could never meet cheese for police so he had to settle for being the mayor Cheese for police? Is that what che- you just said? I said he could never be chief of police. So chief he had to of police. For being I thought the mayor. cheese of police. Okay, I mean, so maybe sorry. a little bit of both. <laughs> the big cheese. Yeah. So we, I remember we started really hot. And at that point in time, there was multiple different groups too that had started, mm-hmm. which was unfortunately forming some of the chaos because there wasn't any, like, really. It wasn't a unified, unified front. Yeah, it really wasn't as united, like, as we were trying to make it appear. So you had certain people scheduling, like, rallies and walks and then you had other people that were handling more of like the legislative part of it and the judicial part like dealing with the the whole system and whatnot and then you just had unfortunately those people that were like well it's a good time for a party so i'm just gonna go yeah, people are out they're about yep it was mm-hmm. summer it was Get it was like you i'll know. join the protest i don't care why i'm gonna be drunk hey, as fuck anyways we're walking in the street Ooh. yeah and it <laughs> dancing was dancing in the street you know it was like right there during the the heaviness of covid too so everybody was like this is my first safe outing where i can be around other people and and then we had of course luckily we didn't have many assholes but we did have a few assholes during some of our like protests that started fights and whatnot and um i don't know it's it unfortunately throughout time kind of dissolved because these different groups were not set up to work within each other or work, you know, with each other. So they started to kind of work against each other. And, and a then bunch it of different just organizations communication gets hard. Yes, yeah. it does. In such a small town, like there's no reason why we couldn't have just worked all together other than being in a small town. Sometimes there's like bad blood between certain people. Everybody wants to have their own identity but, and, and they don't want to do and, it themselves. I, I'm disappointed that I didn't know that you were leading it more at the time because I remember going to Tim Hortons of all places and I called together like a bunch of people who I thought were leading things based on like what I understood from the situation. Mm-hmm. And I sat a bunch of them down and I was like, all right, guys, we really need to be working together yeah and because most of my stuff was through sarah because i was like i'm just gonna volunteer just gonna show up help out whenever wherever i can so i i in my own sense i tried to get more active i was talking to more people and when i saw what you're describing it it was just chaos it was like group 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 and then they started fighting each other because there was like there there was there was the the blm group but then there was also kind of like an lgbtq plus group and they were like conflicting a lot and i'm like guys 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 come on Yep. So I and I remember because I, I sat down with them and I was like, okay, so let's make some spreadsheets. Like let, let's figure out who's in charge. Let's we don't want to make spreadsheets. Let's spread figure out, that would never out be a my response, but okay. Yeah. A bridge I that's, that's how I do it. That's bridge how I building go step number one. <laughs> yeah, I'll fire up Microsoft Excel, Excel baby. Yeah. That's how <laughs> I run everything. So so like I, yeah. I sat down with them and, I, and I'm like, okay, well let's figure out a hierarchy. And I, I remember explicitly being told that we all run certain parts yep. at certain times based on how, like pretty much based on how we're feeling. Yes. And we're not going to change that ever. And I'm like, okay. And that's the day I quit. <laughs> Th- that is the day that I left and never came back. Cause I'm like, I, I, I believe in these messages and I understand that it's not going to come to fruition because you just mm-hmm. don't have the organization. You don't have the ability to show up at events and make them meaningful because <laughs> like the isn't, there was, yeah. isn't that the tale as old as time though <laughs> that us leftists just can't fucking get organized <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> they're not <laughs> using microsoft things. excel I, like what am i telling you we can't get and, anything done like we all we're poets we all have and the right. dreamers we're not excel <laughs> spreadsheet and, types and of then, people which is why i think people like brian are so know, important because right? it's and like no. you know that that organizational piece to yes. making and, change is so huge if you can't if you can't be not only organized, but united in that it's, organization, you're not going to make anything happen. And and uh, I mean, and, and I don't blame them at all because it makes sense. But like my face in my lifestyle doesn't really fit with with what those groups. You're not like, very urban. Yeah, yeah. They they don't they don't <laughs> like uh, 
so so whenever I try to take charge in things, I was usually told to to take a step back because like oh, I d- and and I'm like you didn't have you, what do you know? I, I, pretty much, wow. and 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 I don't and I don't want to like harp on that too much because like there are a lot of experiences that I've never experienced, and, yeah. and like I, the, yeah, it makes sense. And when I see a lack of organization, my natural instinct is to organize. I don't yes. I don't look at a brain Clean surgeon and I'm like, did you ever have a tumor? Yeah, don't yeah. fucking operate on me. Uh, so, yeah. so I, I, I'm not going to go down that that route because <laughs> you know, I know I get because I feel so, like yeah. there are too many minds, and I'm just not prepared for that. Yeah, uh, at, but, at this but, point, it's like whatever issue it is, whether we're dealing with racism or you know discrimination against LGBTQ plus people, you know whatever kind of intolerance it is. And at the end of the day, to turn away somebody who's like says. I agree with these messages and I want to support people and I want to contribute. Why would you ever turn anybody away no matter who they are? Yeah. They want to be on your side and they want to contribute in a meaningful way. Fucking right. And it doesn't I, matter who they are. It doesn't matter what you're fighting for. Like one of the and things that, that was, I got to at yeah. a certain point was it was just people just weren't able to harmoniously work together. And I mean, I'm still part of like uh, the group that I've been mostly associated with was Mickey George's like brainchild. He, um, they came up with it and, you know, just, it was really, really, I, everybody that we were working with, I just was like very proud to be working with them. And there was just some really good minds. That's one that Sarah was working with. And, you know, I felt like we were trying to take it on from the perspective of reforming police encounters. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's about as, in my opinion, neutral as you can get. You're not coming for a side. You're not trying to do anything. You're just trying to effectively look, take a step back, look at police encounters, how they're happening in Olean, which doesn't take a genius to see. They're not really going very well, like time after mm-hmm. time, to try to take a look, a step back, and look at those, review the evidence. And our whole thing was just trying to come up with, you know, like a citizen review board, which took three years to happen, happened, And then, because it got a little heated, the mayor and Miss Witt said, shutting it down. What? Yeah, yeah, that's that's what happened. They they, they just shut it down. You got too passionate. You got too upset. So it's gone. Don't get emotional. Over stuff to get emotional about. Yeah, stop getting emotional. Yep. Getting emotional. Stop being passionate about, you know, uh, negative interactions between police and the people they're supposed to protect. Yep. It's almost like if we interacted on a human level. It, it was it was so upsetting because, again, this is what we've been fighting for since, like, the start because of the George Floyd incident. It was, like, clearly what we need to be looking at right here, right now, is how can we make it safer for people to interact with the police so that we, we in our community, don't have a similar incident. And... We worked on it for so long, and we spent so much time. You know, this was also, again, during COVID, so we had to do the whole tune in to Zoom thing and make sure you're on, and you had to wait your line and, you know, call in at the right time. It's just they had never dealt with anything like this before. It had always been in person, in the chamber, very, very, very secretively done. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, it's every second Tuesday of every three months. You know, it's just like they didn't make it easy to get to – they didn't make it easy to tune in, know what was going on. They didn't update the public, really. And it wasn't until this incident happened and COVID happened and the combination of those two things really forced them to start being much more transparent with us mm-hmm. and start, you know, it, it. I will say, we didn't have a lot of interaction from the community beforehand, but we've seen a huge rise in it. And that's how we were able to start things, even though they didn't last, mm. like the review board amongst some other boards that also – to my knowledge, didn't quite make it. Um, I, but I, I, it's not I, through well, fault of their own. always bad. It's not through fault of their own. It's really, it can really be traced back to the top. It's because we Government don't have a mayor that's bad. working for us. Well, when everything's so gerrymandered to fuck where they don't ever have to worry about losing power and the one Democrat on the legislature gets just fucking railroaded and silenced whenever they try to bring something up. We don't have equal representation for all people in this community because yes, there's a lot of conservative people in this area. It's a conservative place. I can't deny that. And there's a lot of liberal people too. And the representation is not even, and it's not evenly distributed. And 
Uh, I mean, hell. Nothing we, changes. We, just from one of our last guests, my, my cousin Josh, he, he freaking, you know, the senior news coordinator over at NBC, and he's like, yeah, when I come home to Ole and I don't wear my news jacket because I, I used to come oh, home. Oh, God, and yeah. I used to come home, wear it with a badge of pride, and people would be like, wow, you work there? Now he can't do it anymore because it's fake news. <sighs> You work for the, you know, <laughs> you're, you're, you're communist. You're a communist sleeper agent type, just trying to destroy this country. And it's like, <laughs> whoa! So how do you, lost. how do you, how do you begin to engage? Right when you're when the starting ground is, it's you, very well, difficult. It's, it, it's even like it's even like the, the, you know, citizen accountability and you know trying to change the way that police and citizens interact. Because I don't think it takes any genius to say you know, to hear the statement that I'm going to make, like, you know, if we change the way that police and citizens interact to something that's more friendly, human, that's not, you know, fucking mean and brutal, maybe we'll have less issues in police encounters. Mm -hmm. Maybe if we treat humans, citizens and cops like human beings and we go in with that understanding, we have a lot fewer problems. We write the ticket, we get to take care of what's wrong, and we move on. And it's so aggravating because I think Olean is the perfect size that we know our cops. They are our parents, like friends' parents. They are like... They graduated with us, yeah. we know them. They're human beings, just like we are. So it's... And because we're such a small, close-knit community, and there are so many people that are so, you know, very pro-police, and I'm pro our department, like... I'm very much for them. And the they police have an important very, function in really the world do. that we live in. And yeah. I got to say, I was always very, very pleased with the way that they dealt with everything going through those last several years. It wasn't their fault. It was the mayor and the common councils that I was dealing with. That was where the real divide was. But there's so many things that, at the same time our police department could be doing to try to bridge that gap like we've been trying to push more for community policing because my neighborhood is the perfect example of where we need community policing where you should be going down making routine checks not scolding these people not threatening these people because they're down there for a reason hey what's going on on? how are you doing today get to know them better because if we have that mutual respect where you are a cop, so you have to do the things that you have to do, but I am also a human being and I'm trying to make it and live on my own and do things. If we had more of that, it wouldn't just be, oh, the cops got called because they had to break up a fight. Oh, they got called because there's a drug bus charge. Oh, they got called because the meth house down the street it's blew the up. Co- it's the like, cop got called and he showed up and he said, hey, man, it's been a while since I've seen you. What's going on? This looks pretty rough. What do you need? Yep. How can we get, how can we, how can we make this better? What do you need to, 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 to get out of this, even if that's some time mm-hmm. in the slammer to clean up mm-hmm. or whatever? Yeah. You know, but it's kind of like if we, we I mean, we got to start treating people like human beings again. It's difficult. It is. Well, because, you know, being a cop is dehumanizing and it's tense. Yes. You never know what situation you're going into and any situation could be life threatening. You just don't know. Yeah. And especially when we live in a fucking society that fetishizes guns the way we do, any situation could be life threatening. You could get gun pulled on you any time. Oh, I mean, it's I mean, you're in every interaction with a cop these days. Not maybe every single one, but the vast majority of them. There's what fear on both sides, it's right? Instant, it's instant I mean, hostility. It's an instant environment for something bad to happen. Because mm-hmm. just like you said, the cops walking towards a car that could have a gun, and the guy in the car is thinking there is a man walking towards me who has a gun. Mm-hmm. You know he has a gun. Yeah. And you who, don't know if his hand's on it yet because you can't who's, see. Who's got all the cards right now. Yep. You know, yep. it won't matter. Court won't matter if I'm in a bag, yep. you know. And if so. you've got a gun, you could say, officer, I've got a gun and here it is. And they could either, you know, be totally cool with it or they could flip the handle and you don't know. You, so much and, of it depends the, on what you look like. Well, too, I was just so. about to say, and that yeah. might depend, and your and, and yep. your reaction may vary based on the color of your skin. You oh, know? I definitely. They pull say out so. the Family Guy card and they say, "White, not you know, <laughs> good, <laughs> not good." Yep, pretty much. Yeah. Say, so, you know, a lot of people around here drive around with their guns all over their cars, and so I, I'm going to take a step back mm-hmm. because we have a guest, and this is an awesome top, topic of conversation. But we're going to focus on you a bit more. Oh. So <laughs> we, we see that you are definitely heavily involved with your community yes. and that you take a lot of time to do that. Yes. 
which is fantastic, and that says a lot about you. So now I'm going to throw it to you, okay. and I'm going to ask, what would you describe yourself as? Like, well, your basic core principles, what would you describe those to be? Oh, boy. Don't be a dick. Okay. <laughs> like, that's literally what my mom taught me <laughs> from a very young age, um, was just to really and truly be nice to people. And I try to, I just try to live that message every day. Like, I am not a religious person. My parents raised me to try out different religions and all my family is part of, you know, extended family is part of different religions. I tried it. I didn't really get into it. Um, they never forced anything on me and I was just allowed to grow up and from my own personal life experiences, gain my own spiritual beliefs that tie in sometimes to a higher power or whatnot. But at the end of the day, like I am really just one of those people where I don't want to be mean to other people I just don't have it in me I just want to be a good person I want to help myself build myself up to be the best person I can be so that I can help other people and I just think that that extends to the community and you know we were talking briefly a little while ago about like volunteerism and just how you need to you know you need to kind of count on people they're not going to just work for for nothing and one of the problems we have around areas like this is there's just not enough people getting involved and volunteering and trying to better their community. But we keep having people actively working against the community. So it's like I just want to push people to get out of their comfort zones. And yes, we all have to work. Yes, we all have family things we have to do. Yes, we all have personal things. But, you know, a community such as Oliver, Olean, Portville, Allegheny, any of the surrounding ones, they're losing some of their, like, glitz and glamour because people need to get out there and they really need to get involved and put times into things like their only an alumni association. You know, if you if you enjoyed going to school or if you had friends or if you know a lot of people, get in touch with your, like, local alumni association. They always need it. If you're a theater person, there's tons of theaters around. If you're a sports person, somebody's already looking for somebody to help them ump or, you know, coach, like... Whatever it is that you like to do, there's something in your community to do it. So try to give back because that's really how, like, some of the best points in Olean's history is when we had a lot of people actively working for the betterment of the community and the society. Well, it's easy to sit back and be a detractor, but it takes a little bit of effort to get in there and try and build your community up. It oh, yeah. It's a beautiful message. And I will say, like, unfortunately, <laughs> we've got a lot of people right now that are Actively trying to tear it down. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. like I That's said. That's why I said that. We've got people that just, they're not safe in their community. You know, I spoke at length about how there's just people in different communities from black community to the LGBTQ community to, you know, just any different type of organization or group or, you know, peoples that's not like the standard white, red-blooded all American God fearing person that's gun toting, gun toting, marble smoking, <laughs> red hat so, wearing, you know, what, what, what was Eric white t shirt guy? White kind of a t-shirt. Republican. What, what was a time where your core beliefs were challenged and how did you face that? Oh God. When were you tempted to be mean? Yeah, yeah. When, when, were, when, tempted, when were you tempted by the dark side? When were you, in the eyes of God, tempted to sin? <laughs> Every time I drive past those people with the anti-abortion signs, mm. I think about driving up on the curb. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Like they challenge me to no end because that is the hill I will literally die slash kill on. Um, I am. So pro women's choice, pro anybody's choice to have an abortion that it really pisses me off when I drive past and I see these old people with the signs. And I, I just really, I saw somebody on TikTok that was that was going around to those types of rallies and they were taking um, adoption sign up sheets for people that wanted to register for adoption or like fostering yeah. kids. And I thought, what the hell? I should just do that and start hitting yeah. these people up because I can guarantee you. Not a single one will fucking nope. pick it up. Nope. Well, they're all in their 70s and 80s, so mm-hmm. good luck with that. But I don't even, I wouldn't even bet that any of their kids were adopted or fostered or anything. Absolutely like, not. They're not interested it's, it's in It's become really a moral position. You know, I mean, it's not, it, it is not hard to be anti-abortion, anti-abortion <laughs> and pro-choice. No. You know, it's kind of like, 
Because for me personally, it's like I think abortion should always be like the very last option on the table if possible. And it's not my decision to ever make for somebody else. And I fully support anybody to make any decision they want to make. I think that if we have kind of real conversations and we educate people and we don't shy away from the reality of what's going on, people will make the best decision that they can make, whether that is to terminate the pregnancy or take it to term, offer it for adoption, family, whatever. But if we're going to be afraid and we're going to just keep saying, no, don't talk about it, yep. we're never going to find a solution. Yep. You know, if we want to be real about it and say, yeah, you know, I don't like it and people are still allowed to choose, mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Because when people are educated and have the options, all of the options to choose from, then they can choose the best option and they can figure out what's going to work for them. Because I think a lot of people might do it because what's my other option? I don't know. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, there's so many people that just can't afford one Any kid or another kid or they had it with somebody that they don't want to be with. I and mean, if there's we have just a billion reasons. Support and education, then we solve a lot of those issues and we still allow the ability for people to choose. Well, that's the problem is that like these people are the same ones that are. You well, because it's not, not trying about, to have social security it's for everybody. Not about, it's not, not about the middle path. Welfare. It's not about taking the issues and saying where do we meet in the middle. It's about it's the extreme or nothing. The government is so good at pushing us middle class people against each other instead of just fighting the real ones at the very top. Caitlin That's and I right. were talking about this yesterday. <laughs> it is get into it. I always say it's symbolically evident that the color of royalty is purple and that modern politics is divided into red and blue. Because if we could just stop fucking arguing about petty shit and realize, Man. okay. And Steve loves the color purple, too. Yeah, I no, do. like, he's, he's, he's good at math, philosophy. Oh, great at math. Look at this guy. He's Colors. just killing he's it. Color, color theory. The color <laughs> <laughs> you, know, I was, I, you know, I was really like, you know, I was, we were, it was 4th of July, so I was hanging out with some people. You know, watching. Thanks, Steve. Oh, yeah, yeah <laughs> fuck you, Brian. Just, <laughs> just some people. They just, yeah. they just exist. Cool. They're whatever. I, I don't want him to know I was hanging out with you. Uh, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Want, He's like, screw Brian. <laughs> well, yeah, fuck you, Brian. Yeah. Um, thanks, thanks, Kirk. Steve. Thanks, Kirk. Thanks, Sarah, for having me over. But you know, we're sitting there watching oh, Home thanks. Improvement, and I'm going on an absolute <laughs> fucking tear because I am just berating Tim Allen for uh, <laughs> such a miserable fucking. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, okay, so, so the, the premise of this fucking episode. Sort of home improvement. Please tell me because I've seen every episode Tim's, of that show. Tim's Tim's wife's car. She gets a little fucking scratch on it. And she tries to cover it up with some like nail polish or <laughs> lipstick, and he's fucking pissed because this is tiny little scratch. He's fucking autist about his car. <laughs> <laughs> So he's having a freak out. She's trying to study for some tasks. He's bitching at her. You know, the kids are being fucking typical fucking stupid boy teenagers, Teenage not boys, leaving yep. mom alone. Yep. Just fucking leave me the fuck alone. I'm trying to study. I've got to get a job so that I can contribute because we can't survive on one household income anymore. Mm -hmm. So Tim you takes the wife's car. Episode. He's going to take it to the garage after he yep. shoots his fucking wonderful, shitty fucking YouTube show that doesn't get any views. <laughs> Maybe similar to this one. I hope not. <laughs> yeah, I hope not. <laughs> um, At least we have better lighting than that one, dude. So he's got his wife's car. He's going to take it, get the fucking we don't little have tiny Al. scratch. Well, Al's there. They've got a big crane. I'm saying do... we didn't have Al. No, we hmm. didn't. We, we, but we'll, get a, we'll, 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 we'll get one. We'll get one. Al's certified as a crane out. operator, but yeah, Tim yeah. is not. So Tim gets in the fucking crane, fucking around like he's so fucking cool, because Al Borland's the fucking best. He knows shit. But Tim Allen's a fucking useless, simpering cuckold who doesn't know anything, but only, only can assert dominance through berating and demeaning and belittling Al Borland, who's actually knowledgeable. Yes. Oh, so Tim good. ends up dropping a fucking steel beam on his wife's car. <laughs> his wife finds out. He's pissed. She's pissed. He's fucking pissed because he's a fucking fool. He fucked it up. He can't claim it on insurance. And you know what? At the end of the day, he still ends up being the fucking hero. And that's what <laughs> fucking... You shouldn't have used the nail polish. You shouldn't have... No, because you know what Al this said? This happened. Because you know what Al Borland himself said? He said, hey, you know what? For what she did, that's pretty, that's pretty good. Right. You know, you could glance at that and not be too if you only if you look close you could see that. No. It would be a quick quick fix anyway. <laughs> no. But the Tim, steel beam Tim couldn't handle I don't that. think you could look at the car after that and see a quick fix. Anyway, so I'm going on a tear. I I'm love just that mm -hmm. show. Like, I'm sorry, I do. I'm narrating this whole episode. I'm just going on a tear. Just like that. What was I love Al. Was like, and they put on Bluey afterwards and I oh totally my fucking dissociate and I can't say a fucking word. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just watching this thing and my brain just turns to fucking mush and I'm like <laughs> I, I, I've heard the rule kind of the, pull the, the true. He's like, got the true oh clip. Just one. <laughs> it's it's the uh, 
<laughs> it's it's like, like they have you like oh yeah your eyes open with yeah, like the, yeah. with like the metal the rods like. Really it's like a clockwork deep, orange really but like breaths. bluey oh fucking shit I could not I could not process <laughs> thought so it totally it totally silenced me <laughs> oh, the children you. incessantly laughing in the background definitely desensitized me it was like I could not form a coherent sentence listening to that and Wait, then and then we ended up spending the was, it's a children's show no blue. but there were children there no no. There was, oh. there was a dog. There were two dogs. There were three dogs by the end of the night. Oh, three you guys night. were all just watching. Yeah, three dogs. Oh, I saw them but in concert things. once. Well, and before they all started Bluey? dying, no, that oh, three dog, three dog night, yeah. three bluey. Night. No, there's only two yeah, no. dogs left. <laughs> 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 but, and then, and then we ended the night by by watching poor renditions of people singing the national yeah, yeah. anthem, oh. like uh, the, the like the, 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 the twenty twenty one RNC pack. Who sang that one? Some fucking straight conservative looking wasps kind of lady and she was so i mean yeah, i i had to ch- test it a couple times because you know first like line or two she did really well yeah. but, then, but, I mean, but then like some of the notes were like dropping and it was like it was all over yeah. the place so did i show it's so very lightly related did i show you two the the official like broadcast audio for when trump was leaving washington so they, no so in person on the speakers as he's giving his speech and he's like walking away and is walking towards the, the jet to leave to finally go away. Uh, if only. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, in person, they're playing my way, Frank Sinatra. Mm. They could, the, 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 the rights holders would not give them the rights to broadcast it. That's nice. right. So do you know what song they broadcasted? You have not lived until you've seen the loser president walk away and start climbing stairs pathetically to it's fun to stay at the wild. <laughs> <and see it." laughs> yeah. Like, oh no. It, it starts de, 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 de. <laughs> young man. There's no need to be said. I say young man. <laughs> like the <laughs> village people of, of <laughs> like, it's like, like all bands. I, I, that, I they're one of the only what? ones that gave him the rights to but use you know their music. What? Yeah. If you took Donald yeah. Trump and they you like just him. slotted him into the village people, he would fit right in. Yeah, he'd just be the, the <laughs> shitty business one. He'd be the shitty, <laughs> business, <laughs> shitty one. business one. <laughs> Yeah, they didn't have that in the original village people. Uh, they gotta like no, diversify. We need, to, yeah. we need to throw them in there. No, make him make be him Native dance. American. <laughs> How would that go? Over? <laughs> you know, they used an Italian for that one era those years ago, so it'll probably be all right. It'll get it'll go smooth. Yeah, well, you know, he's he's orange so, enough. We're so gonna, we we've you know, managed to cover not even every Macho Man. Uh huh. Not even Macho Man, like YMCA. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I mean they like, or in the navy. Like, I mean, why? come on, it's, like, it's hilarious. In they, the navy. they couldn't they couldn't get Smash Mouth to come to the inauguration, <laughs> so they so so they had three doors down. Oh man, yes. sing All Star at the inauguration oh, no. in 2016. <laughs> You, so yeah, it's the last thing you ever thought you'd want to hear when it's the it's. I mean, it's it's three doors down. All star does not come out of night. All star, all star does not come out of that throat properly. All, all they need is like Mike Rowe to come and give an inspirational speech afterwards, and they'll be set. Like, you know what? Mike Rudy Rowe Giuliani's floating down the river on his <laughs> way. Mike Rowe Giuliani, twenty twenty-four. So, so like I was saying, we've managed to hit every hot button issue. So uh, now, now I gotta, now I gotta ask your opinion on AI and how you, and how you feel about that. Oh, we and then, roll back and then, AI. and then we'll kind of like wrap it up because like, that's uh, the last big one I can think of. <laughs> wow. You're killing me with these. That's wrong. That's what I wanted. No, I like that last one too. Oh, Steve, yeah. just let her answer, please. Oh, <laughs> Lord. Well, give her more of a prompt than just yeah, no, that's it. That's just, it? just go that's into it. it. Okay. Yeah, the whole, just the whole yeah. thing. Oh, trust me, I got a lot of thoughts yeah. and feelings on this one. So I've been a big, um, I've been a big believer for a long time that like the next evolution of mankind is just robots. I, I agree. And yes. just like robots taking over, and mm. you know, like that's going to be the next. Because when you think about it, I'm an, I, I'm an artificial man. Yeah. Think about how weird it is. Like we went from dinosaurs to us. Mm. Like, what is the next weird-ass form of, you know, I feel Dogs. like it's... I wish. Yeah. 
Hopefully. Trust me. I, I mean, wish. in, 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 I in would, a just world, we'd kill ourselves off and they'd inherit the world. Honestly. You know. <laughs> the dogs shall inherit the earth. Trust me, I've had that thought and feeling, no, but I don't think I don't think it's going to be that cool. Would like, if, Ooh, if the yiffers caught wind of that theory, you know, <laughs> they'd be actively trying to bring Are that you one out. yourself right now? Mm. <laughs> Maybe this is my journey <laughs> of self-discovery. <laughs> I've learned something new about myself today. I think today. dogs should vote. That too, yeah. <laughs> I think dogs should vote. Companies can vote. Okay, we're getting off topic. Dogs should definitely <laughs> vote. <laughs> yeah, so um, I literally don't even remember what I was talking about at this point. Oh, yeah. Next so robots. Dogs voting? So, <laughs> dogs voting? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so glad I gave that. <laughs> I am trying to keep it together. There's so much of it. I'm I knew trying this so is what hard. I would turn into. I'm trying so hard not to. Let Anytime you keep I'm it around Steve, I can't stop laughing. It's so difficult. But AI is especially taking over a lot of things in like my world in the art department. So AI is starting to come more and more into play with like design. That's my other full time job as an interior designer. So we're starting to see that more and more, which I wouldn't mind if it was like the technology that I used to make my designs was just getting more crisp, more realistic looking, but it's not. It's just that there's these new platforms that literally use AI to create anything crazy. And I'm like, I don't want to do anything crazy. I just want to make somebody's kitchen. I just want to make my job more efficient. I just want to make my job more efficient and prettier. I don't need all this other like wild and crazy stuff. Cause yeah. you look at the stuff it creates and it's like, this is amazing, but you can also tell very quickly, it's AI artwork because it's too perfect. It's mm -hmm. too seamless. And unfortunately, it's not going anywhere. It's here to stay. So it's going to be really interesting, like, over the course of my lifetime, seeing how much it takes over everything from artwork to design to music to, like, everything. What do you it's, do when you've got an AI in your eyeball? In your yeah, Elon um, Musk brain chimp. <laughs> <laughs> and you got little bonsai buddy floating in the bottom of your eye and it talks to you and it's like clippy and it's yeah, like, like clippy hey, there you go know, with this you, I wouldn't mind you have not it. paid your subscription <laughs> now you must watch ads <laughs> yeah, you, you, can't, oh my. you can't even close your eyes to escape it's, it's just well when you dream you get a 30 second McDonald's ad you know, <laughs> right before you enter RAM. That a, yeah. is the freaky fucking future. That's right what there. I mean. That's no, no. Creepy. Yeah, we can it's, it's more like billboards in space. Like where they're just going to make it so we can't see the stars anymore. <laughs> Elon, I mean, Elon actively yeah, wants I mean, We do it, it with drones now in like in major yeah, cities. It's, too. It's, it's like uh, like displays, yeah. yeah. Like the, the, the like, um, so we're like the, the dystopian. Like we're like, wow, look people. at these little <laughs> tiny robots, dots of yeah. light. They're so pretty. If only we had something like that. Wow. <laughs> if, if, only they, they, if, if only they would form into those crisp golden arcs of the McDonald's logo <laughs> across we, the we, sky. We can't. We can't. <laughs> We can't make these like. <laughs> hey, you know, there's only one president who loves Big Macs and Diet Cokes more than any other president. And it's not George Washington, I'll tell you that. Because he was fucking weak. He was weak. He also hey. had wooden teeth. Yeah, he couldn't fucking get through it. Weak. He had to gum it. Had to gum it. He had to have a slave to it for you him and then baby like, bird it to him. All I'm thinking about is that audio tape that just came out the recording of trump talking about the documents he had in the very give, me the, give me the coke diet coke <laughs> bring in the cokes i'm like <laughs> <laughs> well i mean it's like you literally couldn't write that for tv because he's such a natural actor it's like an ai it just writes it's like itself. an ai script no an ai couldn't That's fucking dream of writing something that good that could right. only come from the man himself. Like, like, I can't the product wait. placement at the very end, just where it belongs. I can't, I can't wait for the legendary <laughs> film where John Goodman's playing Trump and you just hear it in his voice. Bring him. Hey, the I, John Goodman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I it's his bloated car that movie on the screen. I love John Goodman He's like, so much. He's like, check this shit out, and he spills stuff all over it. <laughs> uh, you know, you can get the new Diet Coke-themed lockers for your bathroom. So then you put your government documents <laughs> in the <laughs> I'm like, where the hell is he yeah, going yeah, yeah. with this? Oh, I see. Like, it's a branding scheme. It's a branding oh, scheme. Like, yeah. no, no, he, he, get into espionage. He, he intentionally kept them just to help market for Coke's new product. Yes. You know that man would. That man funded by the Coke wife brothers on themselves. the golf course to write and it off George for taxes. Soros? I mean, that's the lowest. Like, that's the point where you know. And his kids all signed off on it, too. So it's like, that's the point where you know. That's a such a dysfunctional family unit. That I mean, they all just want to fucking make money and fucking screw everybody they can. I know, but that's not. 
a normal family. That's because you're a you fucking liberal yeah, and you're about, spouting all this shit about, oh, don't be mean to other <sighs> people. You know, get anywhere by not stepping on everybody to get to the top. It's yeah. just because That's I'm why a you're loony weak. leftist. That's, That's why, why you're weak. Leftist. That's why you'll never get ahead. That's why I'll never get a job. That's why I'll never, That's why I'll never move job. out of my parents' basement. That's right. That's why I'll never get a car. That's why I'll never get a girlfriend. What Unless zero I'm... pussy does do it. <laughs> <laughs> it all comes full circle. Zero, zero pussy turns you into a leftist. Circle. Zero pussy turns you into Donald Trump. <laughs> Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, it's either it's either a Donald Trump or a fucking leftist cuckold. I, I would so take I, your pick. I'll take the leftist. I, I, I would argue that it's expensive pussy <laughs> that Donald Trump has to deal with. That's given, true. Given that it costs well, him quite I, a bit of money to I buy mean, these wives. When yep. the only way you can and get laid stormy. is by paying money, mm-hmm. you know, you get a little desperate, and eventually, no price is too high. Because let's be honest, Melania, she ain't putting that shit out for anybody. Oh, not anymore. Oh. Not since the stormy stuff happened. There ain't no way. Not since the there ain't no way. Not since, and the, not since storm. the storm. <laughs> when do you think was the last time they've slept in the same fucking bed? Fucking 20 years <laughs> before that. <laughs> you fucking kidding me? You there think, is no love. There's only but, convenience. Do, there's do, only financial there's obligation. So, so do, you think, do you think Baron was in vitro? Baron is a literal fucking haunted fucking soul <laughs> from the fucking 18th century brought it from, sounds like you're describing yourself. Yeah. There's like literally, con- there's literal conspiracy theories that like Baron Trump is some fucking ancient fucking eldritch fucking soul that was like fucking brought and born into this time to be the shadow ruler of the world. Fucking crazy shit. You can look it up. It's not that hard to okay. find. Not the I'm, I'm definitely doing that. Poor but... kid. Poor no, kid. it was like some fucking book was written where like, you know, some guy was Baron, his name to birth to someone named Trump and it was you like could've... super cool or some sh- Fucking He's, conservatives will find anything to fucking yeah, fetishize. Yeah, they will. They'll find anything to do but leader. real research. He pulls that slot machine and he's so excited because he's seeing that he's got a millionaire, multi-millionaire father and then fucking Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> he's, like, yep. well, he's like, well, at least I'll be tall, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah, that kid's life just went from like bad to so much worse. You know what? He West. doesn't give two fucking shits. He's, he's like, going to have everything he needs, and he's going to be a spoiled fucking racist, just like his dear old dad. Just like his dear old dad. Can't we get an applause on that one, Steve? <laughs> so fucking kidding me. Oh man, like what a clown show. Poor, poor kid. Better to go unnoticed your whole life than that, right? <laughs> well, if, he's smart, that if he's smart, he'll keep his head down. He'll. You know, find something he wants to do. He'll do it well. He'll be honest, and the, the, we'll see. Oh, I don't know. I, I said that, and I was like, I don't know how much farther I can take this before I, I, it really I hope, spirals into I, I hope he, yeah. Ivanka's going after, um, she's going by their last name, Kushner, now. She's trying to disassociate from the name. Uh, yeah, well, now they have their own <laughs> fortune, now that they took a bunch of money from the Saudis. And now we've right? become the political podcast. I was gonna say, <laughs> yeah, the, 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 become. <laughs> We've been doing this the whole time. No, no. The, 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 the number of hit markers you're gonna be able to put on me <laughs> during this <laughs> video is 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 I'm like, okay. I'm so bad at talking about myself, but I'm so bad. Like I'm so good at just shit. Okay, on so, politics so here's religions. a memory that I I was thinking about when you know we were kind of planning this. Um, I think the first time that I ever actually played guitar live was um, at a, a benefit for you. Oh yeah. And if you want to talk about that. Oh yeah, that what? That's right. I remember that. I just saw some pictures from that and brought me back. Um, yeah, we had this place called Cajones back in the day. It was the coolest Mexican restaurant ever. It was freaking oh. awesome. And back when I was fifteen, um, I was diagnosed with uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and so I was like out of school for most of my ninth grade and all of my tenth grade. And around my tenth grade. Um, term I had all these friends that like organized this amazing benefit for me they had it at cojones I had friends that like got up and like performed and sang Steve was one of them like it was just it was really amazing it was just like such a a community effort it was another one of those community efforts and honestly like all it was was my friends organizing like a huge raffle and all this stuff for us to do and that's why I say like there's so much to be said about a community when you actually put time and invest in making it come together because I've le- I've met a lot of people over the years. Um, I can fortunately say that I've moved. I haven't traveled, but I've moved to a lot of different places. I've met a lot of people, but, like, I specifically always come back to Olean because this is, like, where my family and my friends who have become my family over the years, like, where my crew is. So I have nothing but 
all love and respect for it and I just want to come back here and continue to make memories with them and try my absolute hardest to make Olean as safe and as welcoming and as friendly and as artistic of a place as possible because we've just unfortunately been lacking so many of those things. Thank you.